Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about complications that are associated with using a catheter um, over time. The reason that I wanted to do this video is because I've done lots of pee videos, many, many pee videos, and I get lots of comments asking if there are long-term risks of catheterization or if there are complications of me using a catheter so many times a day. So I decided to look into it and tell you guys what I found. I'm gonna go over the risks um, and the complications, uh, and then I'm gonna go over how to prevent the complications. So there are three categories of complications. Number one is urethral, number two is genital, and number three is bladder. So we'll go over each of those, uh, and then we'll talk about how we can prevent these things from happening if we use a catheter many, many times a day. Number one, under urethral complications is urethral, urethral bleeding. And this happens sometimes, it's like a minor complication, but it happens sometimes when people start using a catheter because um, your urethra is just not used to it. So it's like minor irritation that causes bleeding. And then once your urethra gets used to the friction um, and sort of like toughens up, then this bleeding goes away. So that's the first thing that can happen uh, with your urethra. The second one that I have in my list is urethral trauma or injury. So unlike the first one, which was just urethral bleeding from irritation, this one is actually if you like cause a, um, a tear or a scratch in your urethral wall. And this can cause, um, again, it can cause bleeding and it can also cause like scar tissue to build up and things like that. So this is one that I think it's definitely more common in men. It actually is more common in men because their urethra is much longer and it's not as easy to get through because I don't want to say floppy, but that's the word that comes to mind. Their urethra is like floppy. That's how I'm going to say it. I'm not going to say anything else, but the urethra is floppy and they have to get it essentially through a floppy urethra. I know you guys are going to make fun of me for that, but that's how I'm picturing it. That's how I'm saying it. So they have to get it through a floppy urethra and it's just harder to not sort of jam into the sides of, of your urethra when you're going through it with a catheter. So urethral trauma is definitely something that can happen. It can happen to women too, um, but it definitely happens more to men because women have a really short urethra and it's just sort of a straight shot to the bladder. Um, but men have a harder time. So that is number two in the urethral category. Number three is false passage and false passage is when the catheter actually makes it into the wall of your urethra. Like it actually pokes into it. So it doesn't just scratch it. It doesn't just, um, tear it a little bit. It actually like pokes right into it, like makes a little hole. And then the last one is a urethral stricture. So a urethral stricture is actually like the closing off of your urethra due to inflammation or scar tissue. And it can happen because of those um, repeated urethral traumas that happen and then you can't get the catheter through. And then the second sort of category of complications that can happen with long-term catheterization is um, genital complications. And so there's only one in this one and it is epididymitis, which is like um, inflammation or infection in your epididymis, which is like the storage tank for your sperm essentially, and your testes. So like your, it would like essentially be like an infection in your scrotum. And I've actually had friends with this. And even though it might not be that common, it is pretty dangerous when it happens because it, the infection, if you don't get rid of it all, then the infection can sort of like stew and cause like abscesses um, in your genital area. And those abscesses can then cause um, fistulas and like just a whole bunch of messy, annoying things. So this one is usually caused by a UTI, like the inflammation or the bacteria that get in there is usually from a UTI. And because the male anatomy, um, reproductive anatomy is connected to the the bladder via the urethra where the sperm leaves, um, then those bacteria can get into the scrotum and cause an infection. So it's usually caused by UTI and it's obviously only in men. And then the last category is bladder complications and there are three in this one. The first one is hematuria, which is like blood in the urine. And this can sort of be like benign uh, and not caused by anything or it can be caused by like a UTI or something like that. Number two is bladder stones. 
And in the literature that I read, it basically said bladder stones can be caused because either it's an introduction of debris into the bladder, like a pubic hair or like some other debris that gets in the bladder and then that um, debris then collects like um, minerals and things like that that are in your urine and then it'll cause a bladder stone. And then the other one it said was the loss of a catheter in your bladder. I don't know that that's even possible. Like how is that even possible really? But it said there's been incidences of like people with women using really short catheters that have gotten it like lodged in their bladder. And I'm just like, how would you not know it got in there? I don't know, that seems really odd to me, but it's in the literature, so maybe that can happen. But yes, bladder stones is a complication. So uh, hematuria and bladder stones, and then the last one is UTIs. UTIs are by, by far the most common complication of using a catheter long-term. Now I'm gonna talk about how you can prevent these complications and what you can do to keep your uh, bladder more healthy so that you're not worrying about these things, especially if you are using a catheter long-term like I have to. So um, the number one thing uh, is really just like hygiene. Hygiene is like so important. So like washing your hands before you cath, making sure that you have a sterile catheter, not reusing your catheters. I know some people do reuse their catheters. More research is coming out now saying that reusing catheters increases risk of UTI. So I don't recommend it if you at all have the ability to uh, not reuse them. So that's number one, good hygiene, not reusing catheters. Um, and then number two is, um, what else is it? Nope, that was it. Those, that was number one and two, I guess. Not reusing catheters and good hygiene. And then number three, and I think this is like, it's probably, there. none of these are like a hierarchy of like what's most important. I think they just all go together to um, protect your bladder and prevent these complications is using a good quality catheter. And um, not reusing a catheter is obviously important, but using a good quality catheter to begin with is really important. And what is a good quality catheter? What is that? what things does a good quality catheter have? Well, it has smooth eyelets, so like the little holes in the top of the catheter that allow the urine to flow into the catheter. Those have to be like smooth. There are some catheters that like, if you feel them with your finger, which you shouldn't be doing, but if you if you are like testing out the type of catheter that you're buying and the eyelets are not smooth, that is one of the causes of urethral trauma. Like any little piece of plastic that's not totally smooth is gonna cause like a little scratch in your urethra. Like if you just run it against your skin and it's rough, that's like very sensitive tissue inside your urethra. Your urethra. So it's gonna cause issues if you're doing it over and over again. Um, using, the, uh, that's the other thing. I missed, I missed. So it was good hygiene, not reusing catheters, using adequate lubricant. So if you're using a, a standard non-coated PVC catheter, use proper lubrication. But the best catheters, the very best catheters that you can really use on the market today are hydrophilic catheters. And I've talked about hydrophilic catheters in another video before, but I'll just remind you really quick what a hydrophilic catheter is. It is a polymer of PVC and silicone that's bonded together in a way that attracts water molecules um, when it's in a water medium. So then the water actually binds to the surface of the catheter and it makes a slippery surface. The water molecules um, covalently bond all around the catheter and then yeah it makes like a lubrication sort of a thing and so those are like the sort of like the gold standard of like catheters now and that's what I choose to use I actually use Coloplast speedy cath uh, hydrophilic catheters all speedy cath um, catheters from Coloplast are hydrophilic self cath catheters from Coloplast are non hydrophilic and anything that says speedy cath from Coloplast are hydrophilic so I choose to use um, Coloplast catheters because not only are they hydrophilic catheters, but they have a, um, a technology that has three coatings. So it's a triple action coating that's actually patented. It allows the catheter to have um, the hydrophilic coating be tightly bonded. It, it allows the catheter to stay smooth the entire length and it allows it to stay hydrated. So this just ensures that the entire length of the catheter has that lubrication that we're looking for and isn't gonna cause any tears or scratches to our, to our urethra. And especially with hydrophilic catheters, 
Staying hydrated is the most important part of a hydrophilic coating. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. If it starts to dry out, um, then it's not going to be hydrophilically um, lubricated anymore. So that's really important. So I recommend hydrophilic catheters and specifically cold plus catheters because they have sort of the best technology on the market, but any hydrophilic catheter is, is great. Uh, it's better than a non-hydrophilic catheter. So uh, whatever you're able to get in your country um, or wherever you live is, is awesome, but I highly recommend cold plus. They're just a great company. If you guys wanna try the catheters that I use specifically, you can enter a contest. Coloplast and I have partnered to do a giveaway of $1,000 worth, worth of catheters. That's a lot of catheters. So it's an entire month's supply. Um, and if you are a Canadian resident, you can enter this contest. I'm sorry for all of the people that are watching that aren't a Canadian resident. Um, I am a Coloplast brand ambassador for Canada, so they only have the capacity to ship within Canada. So that kind of sucks for, you know, the people that are watching that aren't Canadian, but I do recommend Coloplast. It's worldwide. So uh, if you are, again, if you're a Canadian resident, just go to the link below in the description of this video and, and you can enter that contest. You just have to enter your name um and yeah then you can hopefully win a thousand dollars with the catheters that's all i really got for you guys today um if you have any questions please put them in the comments below and i will try to answer them thank you guys so much for watching i will catch you on another video bye